Hello, my name is Eric, and this is my first, my only, and probably my last haul video. So, let's get started. Now, I recently took a trip to a store that we've all been to. Ikea, backwards logo. I'm sure if you've been there, you have not only witnessed the vast amount of stuff they have in that place, you've experienced the huge aggravation of getting there because it's always on the outskirts of town, and you've seen more future divorce, hap uh, actually fights and divorces going down than anywhere else I've ever been shopping to. And uh, so, before I begin, let me tell you this. I have a disclaimer. Ikea is not one of those stores, or any big box stores, such as Pottery Barn or West Elm. You can't decorate your whole house in it. If you do, you look cheap, or you look like you had to get it together in a hot minute, or you look like you have no style. These are stores that you just pick up a few things in to implement into your decor and, you know, change it up a little bit without having to spend too much money, but also having the staple products and staple furniture in your house to be able to treat these items as disposable um, change-uppers. Now, we live in this consumer society. We're all identified by what we buy. It's just how it is. So IKEA, you know, when I think of consumptuous, conspicuous consumption rather, I think of people who shop to improve the status or keep up with the Joneses or look like they got it like that. Um, I guess IKEA could be that in some ways. If you live in a house and you know you're still sorting your your furniture and storing your furniture in, in milk crates or <laughs> that kind of stuff, or you just have a bunch of raggedy hand-me-downs, or you really, you know, maybe you're living somewhere temporarily, then I guess by shopping at Ikea and putting yourself together in a more assembled way, and more pleasing, aesthetically uh, inclined way, then you could be practicing conspicuous consumption when you get there. Um, if you are someone who is very aware of nice furniture and nice decor and how to blend it with vintage things and you really are, you know, have that type of taste, then you will treat IKEA for what it is, which is really grabbing those few things and implementing in. It's not, well... I would, I would like to say that on certain days of the week and I walk in there and it's a hot mess with everybody and their mama and screaming kids and all the stuff, I would say maybe snobs don't shop there. But, you know, I've been there many times where I've seen ladies who are rocking authentic Hermes bags and they're getting in Mercedes Benz on the parking lot and they're shopping there too. Now, they're also not decorating their whole house and the stuff. But I think it is a store that, in its own way, does attract, relate to, and is consum consumed by people who are snobs. It's also a place where you could go, you know, get your <laughs> omnivorous uh, extravaganza on. If you are someone who just likes to experience all types of uh, places to shop and you are just into consumption and you consume from all categories, you know, cultural categories, not just, you know, high-end boutiques, but you're, but you're willing to shop in, in Ikea as well. You know, you are an omnivore. So this place could appeal to you as well. I think it draws in people who have no cultural capital and maybe just go there because of the inexpensive price point. Or it's people who do have you know, a lot of cultural capital have been around a lot of different scenes and traveled a lot. And they know they may have this really, you know, fierce set of antique, you know, Dogon culture masks that they know they can get a fierce high gloss shelf there to display them on. Now that is definitely someone, you know, who is aware and has a large amount of cultural capital, knows how they can navigate and work their way in between many different, many different cultures and many different shopping tendencies and find yourself in a place like Ikea. Other than that, 
you know, you may have some students that just go there because it's cheap or some, some new couples or single moms or whatever. But I advocate it as a place to only pick up those few accessories while you build the nicer things in your house that you save up for from other places. Okay? So let's just get that out of the way. Um, you know, now that I'm thinking about omnivores, there's a lot of reasons why we live in this consum consumer society that's very fluid. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, the art world has changed quite a bit. The, um, there's generational politics, there's structural changes and less exclusivity that happens in the world. And, you know, I think this kind of store exemplifies that in a lot of ways. All right. So let me get back to what I hauled. Okay. One of the things that I hauled back was this pillow. Now this pillow, for some people may think, oh, did I see that on one of the reruns of Golden Girls? Or where did I see it? Maybe I saw it, um, you know, a store on Green Street. This is a, a pillow that was very cheap. I think for both the pillow and the case, you can get it around maybe $18. Now you can, if you're something who has high, someone who has high cultural capital, you can appreciate the simplicity of this. You may appreciate it as taking you somewhere um, that you visited, you know, that has a tropical environment, somewhere in South America that has that kind of, you know, easy fabric yet durable, you know, cushioned couches on verandas and things like that. So this, this may take you there. Um, or you may have no clue and just like it to me, a uh, flamingo. Maybe you live in a trailer park and it reminds you of what your grandma had, you know, in her, her trailer next door. But if you're someone who, you know, has discerning tastes and, you know, has a high cultural capital point of view, you like that this may relate to a higher brand. Maybe its abstractness, its simplicity of design. Reminds you of a Jonathan Adler um, type of pillow. Um, so I think items like this really f identify to both groups. Some people may just buy it as a summer thing to throw on the porch. But you have the case that's made of um, like a canvas muslin. You have some stripes in the back. And, you know, the graphic, when you look at it, is really very clean that's one thing you have to pay attention to when you're shopping um, at ikea is make sure the graphics are clean make sure they're crisp and make sure they make a statement so to me i could find this you know like in my house is very like mid-century modern clean i will totally like throw this on my mies van der Rohe, um david sofa that i bought at design within reach and call a day and it's fierce. It may have a whole different look if you throw it on some other couch from Ikea or the handed down quilted couch that somebody gave you. It may not be as fierce. But it is one of those items that I think if as you're purveying and you're going through the stores, it was nice. It was chic. It was clean. And in the right environment, it works really well. So this is something that I hauled back for under $20. I probably will end up taking it to my design studio and throwing it in a chair or something of that nature. But for now, I'll rock it in the house for a little bit. Um, one thing about textiles. When you see textiles in Ikea, you have to get them pretty much right away. Um, a lot of that moves very quickly. It's not like the furniture. The furniture is usually stapled, uh, are staple items. Textiles, curtains, pillowcases anything like that. They go napkins, whatever. They go really quickly and they move on to the next item. Okay, and speaking of moving on to the next item and within the textile family, I picked out these curtains. Now these curtains regularly were about 40 bucks and I got them for half price. Now, if you look very closely, these are very, um, very mid-century modern. Again, I feel if you are someone who is familiar with 
you know, high, ca- you know, high cultural capital um, environment or state of mind, this is something that you will relate to kind of if you like Miramecco, if you like Vintage Vera, this is something that you would pick up and you'd rock it and it would look fabulous. Anywhere else, it might look just like a cheap curtain you've thrown up, but it's all in the decor. You can see, if you look closely, the design. Very cool, blocked, crisp, modern. These I picked up actually for half price. Um, curtains will usually go on sale when they're introducing the next batch. Um, there's only a couple styles of the Ikea curtains that tend to stay in there for a while. But if um, but most of the fabrics and textiles are pretty much moved in and moved out. So definitely a great haul. As you go through Ikea, it's very easy to get sensory overload. So you want to just make sure that, you know, the best way to shop there is to just kind of like move all the way through do quick edits, and then go back and then revise a little bit more. Um, but yeah, those, those are a great item for, for any room. Okay, seems like I'm developing a life. I'm actually, by the things that I've chosen, I think that I'm reflecting what my own cultural identity is, which is lifestyling, because I've picked up a lot of things that are clean and they're modern and... Um, you know, we'll see what you pick up. You may pick up things that are... Ikea, even though it's generally known for clean design and minimalism, you'll find a lot of country and other kind of things in there too. But I think my my lifestyle, my set of choices is reflect, reflecting and conveys something about me that I like clean and modern and, and stuff that is easily comparable to high cultural capital tastes. Okay. So, the next thing I picked up was this Simple Vase. Simple Vase was under $10. If you are someone who likes to implement a little bit of color, a little bit of texture through glass, this is a great item. Um, the reason I like it is it reminds me of some of the Costa Boda that I have. Um, Costa Boda's high-end uh, glassware, um, usually very colorful, usually very avant-garde. I have a lot of the little sculptures and vases and things like that in some other rooms in my house. And this very much reminded me of it through its color, its shape, and its very abstractness. Under 10 bucks, you can throw some like, uh, what I'll probably put in here, because I like the juxtaposition of something very modern and abstract against something that's maybe very classical and romantic. I may put in some parrot tulips and uh, stack them high and, and kind of finish it off and give it a certain set of style. Under 10 bucks, can't beat it. And if you break it, who gives a shit? Okay, so the next thing that I have, actually the last thing I have in my haul, is a little basic vase. Um, these are nice. They have them in various sizes, various textures. But they're very clean, very modern, and you can you can use them for various things. I mean, in this one, I may throw some, like, now that fall's approaching, I may throw some low shrubbery fall-like flower in here and throw it on my desk or in my hallway or something like that. This was also under $10. Um, if I went and tried to buy something like this at a store like Restoration Hardware that had that vintage look to it, I would play probably three times the amount. So this is something that uh, is great to have to throw in a room, especially to showcase some fresh flowers. So that's pretty much the things that I hold back from Ikea. Um, when you go to Ikea, I think it's a place that you will be able to express your own, something about your personality, the things that you pick out. Some people shop Ikea because of uh, a lot of the low cultural capital um, aspects. They feel that there's a lot of comfort, you know, in some of the things, not only to the budget, but they have a lot of like, you know, sumptuous upholsteries and things like that. 
a lot of the shelving and things like that is very durable. There's a sense of community, you know, by shopping at a place where people come together, you can have your lunch in there and eat the Swedish meatballs, which I don't eat because I don't know what's in them. It's like those chicken McNuggets. They could have many little parts that I'm not down for eating. But anyways, um, and it's functional. Then you have other people that will view the store very much as a high cultural capital place that requires uh, someone with more, um, I guess, more discern discerning taste, someone who would kind of be like, um, uh, oh, I don't know. But it's one of those places where you may find some of the stuff to be aesthetically pleasing, like the clean lime frames that they sometimes have, or you will feel that, you know, the sense of connoisseurship when you go through it and you're actually comparing it to things that are more highbrow that you can implement into your, um, you know, into your environment. So I think that when you do that, that's definitely an aspect of embodied cultural capital. You're knowing how to use something in the correct way when you go into that store. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say about my haul video. Um, if you would like to give me any feedback, you can feel free to uh, leave a message. Uh, if there's anything that you think that I could have included, please let me know. And for now, that's my haul video. Bye-bye. Ikea, Red Hook, Brooklyn.